scenes slash chapter 7. What on earth is happening? Num. Bob. Bob wakes up early as the dawn breaks after a restless night and goes out to the market for breakfast. The monks are there accepting arms and returning solace. He gives them the bags of cooked rice and food that is there for them every day and they say a good luck prayer for him. He tells them he is upset, troubled, and wants to know what is happening with his girls. The monks are helpful to him saying they have heard nothing bad about his girls and tell him to search himself for an answer. It seems to him as though they know something. Bob goes back to his apartment with some bags of market cooked food and some fresh vegetables and fruit and a drink in a bag with a straw poking out of it. Nobody cooks much themselves in Thailand with so many wonderful dishes being prepared and sold all day by those whose years of specialist cooking all day cannot be beaten. During the morning Bob is working at his workstation editing his interviews reviewing and inserting the reverse angle shots of him asking questions. Without his input he gets a flash from a 3D screen object and he hears one comment that makes him pull away from his desk and bite his finger when one of the girl assistants, of the CEO he has seen earlier, in a live corporate interview says in a demonic voice Asian women have to be strong together and Bob does not remember recording it so it appears like a push feed type advertisement. The feed disturbs him makes him sigh but then picks himself up and he notes on his agenda schedule I must no longer be one of the sheep. I really must get off my ass and do something, not just to find his girls but to sort out my life as well for all of us. Bob sees a note he made from his colleagues in the news center to look after his self-interests first in order to retain being in control of his life. If he doesn't smite the mic then he will be no good for anyone and could become a burden to them all. He does some research doing linked multi-screen web surfing. As he does he starts getting strange mental flashes from somewhere. He assumes they are coming from his workstation, and they are concerning his girls. They appear as subliminal flashes of jungle and what looks like a prison compound, it feels uncomfortable to him as it gets stronger. These visions rattle him so much he gets up and takes some fever medicine as it makes him feel sick and worried and so he goes and lays down. Later, back at his desk Bob looks up schizophrenia on a web medical encyclopedia but highlights the lines as he reads that his experiences don't appear real to him or his own thoughts but appear ghostly and the messages he is getting are clear and undistorted. The images are pushed at him like TV news without personal choice or reason based on personal history or current situation, but unlike schizophrenia they don't communicate with him as real and he laughs at pictures of John Nash as they appear with scenes from the beautiful mind movie as if the computer is playing with him and his thoughts about schizophrenia. All this activity he feels is abnormal. It is so unusual for him it makes Bob check to see if his search profile is turned on or off so that he is not playing games with his own profile that obviously biases new results towards his previous search topics and results he has clicked on. The kind of uncanny results that sometimes give users a deja vu kind of experience or feeling that they are being spied on. Bob has a scientific mind requiring proof by repeatable and non-coincidental but connected second source results from testable examples. He has the scientific ability to see connected relationships occurring but being wary enough not to create results to fit coincidences with any preconceptions he may have. He continually takes steps back to review what he has found. Steps out of what may be a narrowing canvas to review what is surrounding the picture. Not so much creating a bigger picture but looking at what may be influencing the context of that picture and maybe making it bigger if necessary. Looking at the outer picture of what is inside the box. Bob is not the normal sensationalist journalist who fits situation results into sensationalist cliches presented with overdramatic dialogue that creates a false populist priority rather than a realistic grounded perspective within a well-defined context boundary. His reports are very matter of fact. He reads a topic thread which says when the profile is on it is often a shock when something appears that is a part of a search topic that is part of your past and you say hey where did that come from? It's part of your profile history appearing, 
so don't overreact as it is part of you. Turn it off if you want unbiased search results. H knows this but is reassured by it but again wonders why it has appeared again like some push advertising. However Bob stops himself short when he finds himself talking to the screen as if it is a person and then says hey, what the heck. We all imagine this will happen for real one day. Hello recursive cyber numpty searching your own searches. Dot. Actually he is always talking to the screen as he gets immersed into what he is doing but had not noticed it before as he has become very sensitive as his girls are gone and the place is hauntingly quiet. The girls often laugh at him talking to the screen and laugh that it is a sign of genius. As he sits contemplating the screen 3D bubbles appear to come out of the screen and explode in his head with more pictures of his girlfriends. They appear inside his head behind his eyes not around or in the screen. The 3D projection creating objects inside his head as he moves his head not just appearing in a solid 3D space which is not the way it is supposed to work. What is appearing is called the real 3D image, a virtual image being behind the screen inside the box. Real images are those outside the box, and these are being created behind the eyeballs of the viewer and give a very strange feeling as Bob holds his head covers his eyes and the images go as he plays peekaboo with the images. Bob leans into the objects as his girlfriends appear alive and not hurt but in a place that appears stuck and full of apparently empty buildings like a deserted industrial compound but it feels to him like there is a lot of life there that can't be seen as he scribbles what he sees in his 3D post-it app. Bob seems to be getting more push pop-up advertising type links to the woman he saw on the screen on the TV news item, the Auntie Ant, with her two Xerox clone henchmen women, sidekicks than he thinks is not healthy for uninterrupted web searching. He feels like they are trying to avoid him by crippling him with an overload of propaganda type information that will disturb him. When he tries to find apps to correct it he has used before he can find the websites and makes a lot of mutterings to himself about download now it won't be the tomorrow, information age crippled by censorship and greed. Hooray for GNU which makes him stand up when he finds himself shouting again. However he finds inner strength to continue and finds John Nash's words about his schizophrenic invisible friends they haven't gone away, I got used to living with purposely ignoring them. He sees the YouTube of comfortably numb by Pink Floyd in a search and plays it in the background. He sits back and phones Dick who is sitting with a jug of beer and goes out to join him. Dick is lauding it at his table, as he does every day, and as usual a little tired and emotional. Bob sits with him and tells all of how his guts are tangled and how he must change his life and go look for his girls. Dick says slow down and spouts a load of uncontrolled emotional bollocks about love being everywhere etc. Nothing useful but the standard offers to heal emotional wounds promoting love and denying that love is a cause for lethargic demotivation and hate being the real driving force. If you don't like something you remove it, if you love something it makes you accept it even if the love situation causes you to let everything around you fall apart while you are in its misty grasp. Even if the love promoters insist hate trips you apart you are at least motivated, proactive and driven to remove the cause of the item or items of dislike that plague you. Dick tells Bob to be careful in his search as the islands around them still have cannibals who collect shrunken heads. He jokes that they would be better fed by politicians shrunken heads. He says protection is limited as poisoned blow darts go straight through Kevlar body armor as they are fine points and not wide bullets. He adds you can't see the tribal chaps either as they have learned to be part of the trees and paint themselves into the trees while they wait to dart their prey. Bob says he does not expect to go deep rainforest hunting even though he has previously talked about adventures with Dick where both have had months of training there in the past. They end up laughing about conservatives having shrunken heads and the amount of cheap headhunters around with the sexy connotations. Dick has an awful nasal laugh like Keith Richards that makes Bob cringe but smile. 
Bob has now made his own decisions by bouncing off Dick and staggers off with a purpose and now nothing will delay him or get in his way. On his way back he stops at the market to get some food and speaks to his local monk friends, who are his guardians and the guardians of the community as they hear the worries of all the people. Something strange they say about Chi brings him back to them as his girlfriends are strong Chi practitioners and they give him a bit more to dwell upon in typical think-it-out-yourself monk style. 